Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today I've got a ton of big stories that I'm really excited to go over. Starting with Steam reaching their highest all-time concurrent users, a new Nvidia GPU was found, Xbox Series X's full specs are revealed and it proves something about Big Navi, and AMD announced two new Ryzen 4000 processors. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, Steam officially reached an all-time high concurrent users over the weekend, likely due to the thing that shall not be named. As you can see on SteamDB, they reached over a massive 20 million players on Sunday the 15th. And even while writing this, Steam has over 18 million players playing on a Monday. Also, while speaking of the thing that shall not be named, it looks like Nvidia has officially postponed GTC. For those who didn't know, the conference was originally changed to be an online-only event, then that was changed to simply being a news release, and now it's just been postponed. And what's worse, Nvidia didn't give us any kind of date for when it will happen. With that said, I do have some good news, as Nvidia looks set to release a new GPU very soon. But first, it's time to own the seas in your very own warship with today's sponsor. World of Warships, the long-standing free-to-play online PC game with over 300 fully detailed and realistic ships. You can pick between multiple classes from destroyers, carriers, battleships, and more, each with their own playstyle so there's something for everyone. Plus with new events, upgrades, and customizations, there's always something to do. And you know what? I'm gonna say it. It's a lot of fun. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link in the description and use the coupon code READYFORBATTLE2020 to get 700 doubloons, 1 million credits, 7 days premium account, the premium ship USS Charleston with stars and stripes camouflage, and the premium Japanese ship Ishizuchi for free today. Next up for today, like I said earlier, Nvidia looks to be gearing up to release a new GPU. Well, sort of new. In a recent EEC filing by Azus, you can see three new RTX 2060 GPUs that offer 8GB of GDDR6 instead of the normal 6. Now, you're probably thinking, Meld, we already have a 2060 with 8GB of VRAM. It's called the 2060 Super. And well, that's somewhat correct, but remember that the 2060 Super is essentially a cut down 2070, so it has more than just higher RAM when compared to the 2060. Basically, it won't be the same level as the 2060 Super, but given this new card is priced the same as the current 2060, we'd essentially be getting a bit more power at the same price, so it's definitely a plus. What's interesting is that I wasn't so sure about this when the story first dropped. Maybe it was a simple error. I didn't know. But if we look at the recommended specs for the upcoming Doom Eternal at 1440p, you can see it mentions an 8GB 2060 specifically. Now, I will say that they actually took it down and changed it to 6GB, but with the EEC filing, this is definitely looking more and more real. Next up for today, Microsoft has officially announced the full specs for their upcoming Xbox Series X console, and with it brings some really exciting potential for AMD's big Navi GPU. But first, I'm going to quickly go over the newly announced specs. Starting things off, the new Xbox comes with an 8-core Zen 2 base CPU with an all-core clock of 3.8GHz and 36 when SMT is enabled. It also comes with a 1TB NVMe SSD as well as 16GB of GDDR6. As far as how that memory is used, 10GB goes to the GPU, 3.5GB for the CPU, and 2.5GHz are reserved for the OS. You can apparently expand the storage with 1TB expansion cards, which is a bit scary because proprietary cards like that are almost always overpriced. Luckily, you can add external HDDs using USB. Not only that, but Microsoft released a video showing the difference in load times between the Xbox One X and Xbox Series X. And as you can see, it's massively different. In fact, the Xbox Series X loads a full 40 seconds faster than the Xbox One X. Now, with that out of the way, the really interesting part here is the GPU, which officially comes with 52 CUs. What's interesting is that it proves RDNA 2 can handle more cores than AMD's RDNA 1. Remember that the recent rumors we've seen suggest Big Navi will get 80 CUs. The issue is that RDNA 1 only supports up to 40, so we now know that RDNA 2 can in fact support more than that. Whether it can get up to 80 CUs has yet to be seen, but it's a step in the right direction. And let's be honest, either way, Microsoft's next-gen console is looking pretty powerful to say the least. Lastly for today, AMD just announced their Ryzen 9 high-power or high-performance APUs. 
For those who didn't see my video a few weeks ago, the 4900HS was first spotted in an ASUS laptop, but today AMD has officially announced it, along with their 4900H. As you can see, they both still come with 8 core, 16 thread CPUs, but the 4900H has a base clock of 3.3GHz and a seriously impressive boost of 44 like the 4800HS, the 4900HS is essentially the 4900H set to 35 watts. It comes with a base clock of 3 GHz and a boost of 4.3. What's interesting is that AMD was able to raise the base clocks while maintaining the same TDP, so they actually had some wiggle room here. Both APUs come with 8 7 nanometer Vega cores set to 1750 MHz. When it comes to performance, AMD shares some FPS on the 4900HS, and I have to admit that it's pretty impressive, though of course it's best to wait for third party reviews. Still, remember that this is a 35 watt package. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for that Nvidia GPU, or how powerful do you see AMD's big Navi being? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out World of Warships in the description below. And as always, have a great day.